college football's playoff is about to expand. It's going to happen. We had Heather Dinich on the TV show this morning. She had the story yesterday. And I won't get into all of the details, but the bottom line of it is one meeting is going to happen that's going to beget another meeting, which is going to beget another meeting, which ultimately is going to beget a system in which far more than four teams wind up making the college football playoff. It might be eight. It might be 10. It might be 12. I have very mixed feelings on this. Very, very mixed feelings. My first and foremost feeling is that asking these unpaid people to play all these extra games that that would create in the interest of the generation of revenue they will not receive is just inherently unfair. I have felt that way forever. I was actually thinking about this the other day. The very first time I ever got a chance to host a talk show on the radio was in the fall of 1992. We had launched the, the All Sports Radio Station in Chicago, and I was a behind-the-scenes person, and I worked my way up into getting to do some reporting, and one day, like, they had me fill in on the talk show on a weekend, you know, in the evening. And I filled in hosting a show, and this was one of the things I talked about then. So this is 29 years ago. I was talking about how unfair it is that college athletes don't get paid. And so, so that's been, and, and obviously I was hardly breaking new ground with that. And we are on the cusp, I think, of a time where the system is going to change substantially, but not in the next 15 minutes. So that's my first thought. But let's put that to the side. Let, let's not deal in that, because that just changes the topic. If we want the topic to be, do we think it is just good or bad for those of us who are fans of the sport and enjoy watching it, for more teams to be involved in the playoff at the end, I have very mixed feelings even on that. Here's where I'm worried about it. What makes college football so great is the extraordinary importance of regular season games, which is to say that, and I don't have a list in front of me of what they are, but I promise you there are games on the schedule this year in August that will be playoff games, that are basically playoff games, that the winner is still in and the loser is out with a chance to win it all. And that, from a fan's perspective, every single week is phenomenal. Phenomenal. Almost every single week in college football, you're getting one game that has championship-level importance. And that's really all I need. I'm not a person who is going to sit and watch nine college games on a Saturday. I'm not. I'm going to watch Northwestern's game, and I'll watch the one or two other games that you can't miss that have everything at stake. The flip side of that, the problem with that, is those are really the only games that matter anymore, which is to say it creates a system where so many of the games are comparatively meaningless, which is to say I'm just, I'm just going to throw a name out there, which will make everyone there mad at me, but whatever. I'm just going to use this. If you're Auburn, and you're a fan of Auburn, or if you're a super hardcore fan of Auburn, you're going to watch their games anyway. But generally speaking, once Auburn loses its second game, none of the rest of their games really matter. Like, they can play spoiler, but they don't matter. And I'm not singling out Auburn. That's true of literally every single team whose objective is to try and win a championship. And if we're going to limit the number of teams whose objective is to win a championship to seven or eight teams... Well, then you're talking about hundreds of irrelevant games every year. So that sort of flies in the face of my argument that limiting it to four makes the games more important. So I'm walking that line, and Hembo, I'm turning to you because I'm curious to get your perspective between I don't want to water down the meaning of these really big regular season games, but I also do recognize that we are talking about a system where 50 games are being played per weekend and only two of them really matter that's a problem, too. Which way works better? I think that sh should they expand, which, like you said, is probably inevitable, it would greatly increase the drama in the regular season. Like you said, because there's only four teams now, there are a select group of games that matter disproportionately. Like There are de facto playoff games. But then in relation to the playoffs, almost no other games do matter. And in my opinion, if you have the number 11 team playing the number 16 team in the country in week 10, both with two losses, that's also a de facto playoff game, and you're going to get way more of those. No, those might not be the cream of the crop, top, top, top teams in the country, but it will uh, incentivize a lot more teams to go to sort of chase forward in that regard that just don't have that chance now. And given how watered down bowl games have become, I think there's 
there's a lot of value in that, especially late in the season. One of the reasons that they'll do it, because everything they do, they do for their own re reasons beyond the money involved, mm -hmm. is that more and more college football players are going to start not playing. They will follow the Nick Bosa mo model, which or, or, well, that's a bad example because this team did wind up making the playoff. But if you're a star player and you've played five games and your team doesn't have a chance to make the playoff and you're generally speaking solidified into mm -hmm. where you're going to get drafted. Well, every single game you play, which are basically glorified exhibitions. Now you're taking, you're running the risk of a serious injury. So we saw a lot of players last year because of COVID opt out as the mm -hmm. season was going on. I, as I was going through the draft, you know, getting ready to do the draft, all these players, how many of them played six games and then opted out, played seven games and then opted out. That could become the norm. Mm. And I think the people who run the sport recognize that. If all of a sudden, instead of five teams by that point or six teams have a chance to make it, 25 teams have a chance to make it with five weeks left, far fewer players are going to drop out. Oh, yeah. They'll probably play with a chance to go to the championship. And there's also some, I think, nationwide fatigue because you're seeing the same team seemingly every year. Right. And Booger said today something on the TV show that I disagree with. He said, we're talking about this every single week in terms of who should be in and who should be out. I don't see why that still wouldn't happen with expansion. Like, Greeny, every single year in March, we're arguing about whether Syracuse is the 35th best at-large team in basketball when most people haven't even seen them play. Right. If Auburn's the number 11 team in the country and you're arg arguing between Auburn and Northwestern as to who should be the last team to get in the playoffs, that's still way, that's still super interesting. Like, you're still getting that. And, and in that case, the answer is Northwestern. <laughs>